Totally ready. All right. Uh, we are recording. Welcome to uh, uh, Shipple.edu, the tribe where you go to learn stuff. It's where noobs go and you're like, what the crap is cryptocurrency? <laughs> and or you want to see what the 101, Shipple 1, 101 memes are like, which by the way, I can't get over how good they are. Like as a whole okay. series, it's just it just makes me smile but every single time without uh, uh, without fail. So we got Dino here who is uh, who's my, my partner in shilling. Um, and Sue and Jess from uh, from Triple.edu. The first mission that I think it was the first one anyway that you guys launched at uh, .edu was basically shilling four questions, um, which I thought was super super smart. And now you got a list of questions, and uh, I will do my best to answer uh, all of them. <laughs> just run through them. <laughs> yeah, just like ready, rock and roll. Let's, let's do this thing. All right. Oh, are we, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what I did was I took the I took the questions that they were and uh, kind of grouped them all together based on you know what I thought would be interesting things. Okay. Uh, so if we start at the top. I mean, this is a pretty big one to start on, but Corey, <laughs> the company still feel as though it's a joke. Um. So do companies still? This the shipple. Oh. Still feel like a joke to you, basically? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and Dino, Dino and I have actually, it actually stopped being a joke the second the charity stuff showed up. Mm. So, yeah. like, within, within a week, it was like, wait a minute, this was supposed to just be funny, and now it's become this weird deep thing. Um, and it, it has only deepened from there kind of exponentially in, like, 900 different directions. But Dino and I have actually talked about it, and Dino actually gets, like, pissed off. He's like, it's not a joke. It's hashtag no joke, which you'll see every <laughs> once in a while. Uh, but that's, you know, like, we, the, especially the, you know, people like you guys coming to the project and um, people like Stella and people like Greg doing the charity stuff and, and, and Jamie Carlson, you know, starting out with the USA Tribe and really trying to, to mesh out and, and, and help everybody come together and Rod Smith and, 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 and right? Like, it just, there's so many amazing people that have come in and are really putting their, their, their real energy into this. That yeah, like a lot of what we do is funny, but it's definitely not a joke. Um, from the yeah, it's uh, fun, but not a joke. Right, like from the from the fitness DAP to the Zen applications to the meme war stuff that's going to turn into a DAP at some point um, to the the cryptocurrency education that you guys are doing that we started you know started doing at Basecamp and you guys took the lead on on creating a whole thing of that. Like, yeah, it's I my favorite thing about the whole is it a joke thing now is that a lot of people in the EOS ecosystem still see us as a joke and i yeah. really really like that me too yep because yeah no one no one can see us coming at all right. and it, honestly it probably wouldn't matter if they did anyway it's just kind of cool that they can't right <laughs> cool yeah uh, so obviously there's a lot of shell floating around and people are giving it out like hot cake um do you know how much shell has been given out up to, to now um, yes. yes, it's about uh, 2.7 billion, if I'm oh, not mistaken. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. And that's with like every single one of the airdrops, the little bit of OTC, which is over the counter sales that we've done, um, which is probably about, I'm going to say about uh, maybe a half billion all told, um, but probably about half that. Um, wow. and, yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you got to think like the first time we did an airdrop, the whole point to giving a thousand people a million is that that's a billion. Yeah. Right. right? And we only had about 600 addresses. So it was only about, you know, uh, uh, that much for, for that. But yeah, so that's every single mission, every single tribe that for two months, um, we've, we've been about that. And the budget right now is to, uh, you know, we've got, you know, 1.3 ish, uh, billion left to get us to 2000 people at base camp. Um, and then we might talk about this afterwards, but you know, that's the, the uh, once we hit 2000 is when I'm sort of manually doing a having event. So the budget to get to 4,000 is still only 2 billion. So our budget is, is, uh, is, is effectively cut in half. So every number that we use from shilling people to the, the meme wars, uh, 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 rewards that we do for, for the winners, all that kind of stuff, every, uh, stuff for every thing drops, will be in half. everything will just be cut in half. Right. And some of this stuff you're talking about, we will get to another question. Okay, excellent. Because <laughs> there's stuff in there, I'm sure that 
that people don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Airdrop, <laughs> what? <laughs> Having events, double what? <laughs> what? what? All right. Yeah. Sorry. All right, so, I'll quit getting ahead of myself. So can, can shill be purchased? Yes. Just straight up purchased right now. How do they do that? So you would contact me. Uh, we're not, we're not advertising it. You know, I don't want to, uh, you know, make it a big, huge deal or whatever, but I have, uh, sold some for, for $10 a million, what's called over the counter. Um, uh, right now you can still do it, uh, uh via, uh, PayPal. I, I basically just message me if you want to purchase it and, and I send you a PayPal link. Uh, but you actually will get more if you, uh, use EOS. So if you have any EOS or if you buy it from Coinbase, you'll actually get more, uh, uh, uh more shippable that way. But yes, yes, you can buy it. You just have to contact me privately. All right. Yeah. How many, how many members do we have in the Chibble community right now? Do we know? Like, are there members that aren't just in the Facebook group? Yes. So that's, that's a good question. So I think that there's some that are in, on Telegram. I believe that there's some people that are kind of in our orbit on Twitter. Um, mm. But we're, we're basically 10 away from 1,500 at, uh, at Basecamp. And, of course, we're trying to make sure that everybody lands there. Uh, right you know, at some point, cause that's sort of the, the, the primary metric where you, that we're using to move forward. Um, but I, I, I would, I would probably pin it at about five or 10% more people are sort of out in the, in the world that aren't at base camp. That's just a guess. Right. And how many people of all those members, how many people have the power to send Shipple? That's a really good question. So right now, Very good um, question. yeah, right now it's about 50%. Right now we have, uh, cause, and that's one of the things that, that we started doing, um, airdrops every hundred, even if it's just a tiny little one, a lot mm. of that was so that Dino and I are forced to constantly be developing our list. Cause you know, I'm sure you guys have seen like, Hey, we did the airdrop and everyone was like, no, you did it. Oh my God. Everything's broken. <laughs> right. How many times have we seen that? Um, but it, 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 it's helping us to make a pristine list and have a gauge. And so I think right now it's about 700 people, 750 people whose, uh, EOS addresses we actually have. Um, so oh. it, it is coming in at about half. Um, and the, you know, if that ends up being the case, although the numbers actually have been going up for the last hundred, I think we've got about uh, 70, uh, EOS addresses just over the last, uh, uh, few days. Um, it's actually been a, a fair number, but if it does maintain that, then when we hit 10,000, there's actually going to be 5,000 people with active, uh, EOS addresses, which mm. I'm totally comfortable with. I think that's a, a solid number. Are there, are there a lot of people that don't have wallets yet? Yeah. So about half of the people at base camp. Wow. Yep. And that's the thing. I think that's, that's where doing some, some posts in, in uh, Basecamp from shippel.edu to really see if people you know, need help with that or, or need to you know, see some videos about getting some handholding through that process, I think would probably go really, really far. I mean, just think about it this way. Half of the people in Basecamp are hanging around for reasons other than receiving Shippel. Huh. Yeah, or they just got added and they're like, who are these weirdos? Yeah, they either have no idea what's going on or they like what we're doing so much that they're in, they're, they're hanging around just right. even though they can't get chill. Well, that was my aunt Gail till like four days ago. And then she figured out yeah. how to send chill and lost her freaking mind. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was great. So if yeah. you haven't sent it, there is literally some weird dopamine rush for sending this magic internet money. That, oh, it's really is, that, is, that is very real. So get on that and, and you know, get started. Tip a meme. Right. It's yeah. awesome. That's, that is absolutely true. Every time we get to, to show people for uh, posting memes or um, asking questions or whatever, it's, it's, it's really fun. I love doing that. That's right. Great. Cool. Sue, so do you have the spreadsheet up? Do you want to ask a couple questions? Go ahead. Okay. I'm, ke I'm keeping notes on the bottom of the spreadsheet. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we're going to get into talking a little bit more about EOS Wallet. Okay. And this first one is a little bit it's a pretty broad question but um they want to know how does the eos wallet function okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh short so, question long answer yeah yeah so i i would i would say that there's basically two ways to answer that question and, and the first one is simply and I'll, I'll do that first and then and then i'll 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 give the you know sort of the more real answer but it's going to get into topics that we'll probably be covering later as well so the simple thing is th simple thing is is that like bitcoin or doge or a lot of other blockchain type cryptocurrencies right eos and everything that is built on top of eos of which shipple is one right or you know pos or karma or the everipedia uh um, iq token 
all of the things that we deal with in the EOS wallet are actually built on top of EOS itself as a blockchain, right? So Shipple is riding around on the EOS blockchain, yada, yada, yada. So the wallet is the simple user interface, the stuff that we can basically get in there, plug our private key into it and, and be able to use back and forth, not only Shipple, but EOS itself, and then everything else that, that is built on top of the EOS blockchain. So it's actually extremely, extremely powerful what you can actually do with these new EOS Lynx wallets. And there's lots of different kinds, right? But the specific EOS Lynx one that we have, I picked it because it was the easiest one that was really, you know, at its face value, my Aunt Gail can use to send shill back and forth in a very simple and understandable way. But when you hit the explore button, that's when your brain starts to explode because you can start to see that every single dApp, decentralized application that's connected to EOS, most of them you can actually access right through that wallet. Um, and that, that's only going to, uh, uh, um, to increase as well as the exchanges and stuff like that. So that is actually kind of a halfway between the simple and the complicated answer. That's, that's more, more or less it. It's how, yeah, it's, it's how we send shill and EOS, et cetera, back and forth. Um, but it's also how we will access the larger ecosystem of, of applications that are built on the EOS blockchain, which is going to be the biggest deal for us over time. Yeah, that's really exciting. I've yeah. heard a little bit of you guys talking about that, and I'm a complete noob when it comes to crypto, and that is <laughs> really cool and exciting to hear. Yeah, about I mean, it. the biggest thing for me is like the, there's something called a decentralized exchange, right? Which is more than likely the first uh, uh, kind of exchange that we will list on. And that basically means that you never have to send your money anywhere. Like for the entire time I was trading in cryptocurrency, you'd have to send it to Coinbase. And Coinbase literally had your money while it was being traded. Or you would send it to Binance and Binance had all of your money while you were trading it back and forth. So there was a lot of concern about you know, people uh, hacking into exchanges and a lot of people lost a lot of money from smaller exchanges. It was a big deal. But with, with these decentralized exchanges, you have your wallet you plug your wallet into the exchange, the exchange is plugged into everybody else's wallets in a very distributed way, right? And you just make trades based on, on uh, what's available. It's, it's a lot like peer-to-peer -peer file sharing that way. But we, we didn't have anything like that. Just in 2017, when I first started getting into this, the idea that we would have a wallet where I could make a token, it would automatically be on the wallet and you could all, also, without too much trouble, get it on an exchange and actually have it be this real fungible thing was a freaking pipe dream. It was not even remotely possible. And then add in all the other things that we're probably going to be able to do with this stuff. And, and yeah, that's, that's what like legitimately keeps me up at night trying to figure out how to, how to, how to get all that stuff running. Right. Oh, that's really cool. Um, Jackie Glinky asked, why do we use RAM to send someone shipple that who doesn't have it already? Right. So imagine, um, imagine a blockchain where you could basically send a hundred thousand transactions every few seconds to whoever you wanted and then not have any associated cost with increasing the size of that database right so the 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 reason why eos is so fast is because you know it, they've got 21 block producers basically 21 supercomputers running it all in tandem at the same time right so by putting that little ram cost on adding new uh um you know shill holders or eos holders or whatever basically adding a new uh, line in the ledger is to avoid spam that's really all it is right cool. it's to avoid a company coming in and saying hey i want to add five billion eos addresses uh and and send everybody shill immediately right and there you know if there was no cost to that you could do that every minute until the whole thing fell apart Right. Yeah. So the, the RAM cost is basically, and they do try and like, and this is the interesting thing about RAM cost. As you send to people that don't have Shipple, or if you're sending EOS or whatever, but as you're sending um, a token to someone who doesn't have that token yet, right? It's going to cost you a little bit of RAM. When they send it to somebody that also doesn't have it yet, you actually get your RAM back. Right? So, so the, it, it actually ends up being a little bit recursive so that you're, it's just that leading edge of, adding adding new people to the network or adding new pieces in the in the ledger that has that cost associated with it and as that moves forward and percolates out you actually get the ram cost back and, and it starts to come back over time i'm i'm still confused on this if that's where fair is, this took me months <laughs> where is the ram coming from okay so the ram is just a made-up number okay so think about the 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 well if you go to eos if you go to eos links 
right? Or uh, not EOS link, sorry, EOSflare.io, like that website where you can search your own yeah. EOS account, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's got, uh, I think we're at about 1,200, 1,300 people holding Shipple right now, right? Well, Every time that there's a new number gets added to that, the entire EOS network gets that tiny little bit bigger. So RAM is just the associated cost of adding that line in the larger database. It's not a computer function. It's just like, this is something that, that the sort of world computer that is EOS needs to hold in its memory in, in a way that is instantaneously accessible, which is why they use the word RAM because that's what your computer is. But it's, it's not a, a, a direct thing. It's just an analogy, right? So it's, it's basically a way for, for, for people to understand what that cost is being associated with. And it really is the, the size of the amount of uh, uh, things that the EOS computer needs to be able to access instantaneously. Hopefully that made sense. It didn't make sense as it was coming out of my mouth, even though I'm pretty sure it was accurate. And can, I mean, I'm thinking that basically I don't need to worry about it, but you, when do I have to worry about it? Am I going to run out of it? Well, so if, and this is, one of my favorite things is there, there are people now who are running out of RAM. And what I know from that is they're on the front lines talking to noobs. So you guys will definitely be like, as we start fleshing out to uh, uh, this tribe, you'll probably be the, uh, the ones that are, are, you know, assuming that Dino and I don't get to them first when they show up at base camp, you might start running out of RAM very quickly. Now I am from the, some of the sales that we're doing from the token. I'm trying to make sure that I'm buying RAM for the people that run out of it that are helping all of us to grow the number of people that are holding Shippo. Like I want to, as much as possible, take that cost on. Um, so yeah, you absolutely don't need to worry about it until you run out of RAM and then you're like, Corey, what do I do? And then I can help out. Um, and and yeah. I, I think now is a good time to, to talk about what we buy the RAM with. Yeah, so RAM can only be purchased with, uh, with EOS tokens. So... I mean, obviously, I, I uh, uh, have some. I've been buying up EOS for the last two years because I had yeah. a feeling this was coming, although it's significantly better than what I thought was going to happen. Um, so I've, I've got uh, uh, some in reserve. But if anyone wants to buy EOS, this might actually be getting ahead of ourselves anyway. Um, I would yeah. just highly recommend going to uh, Coinbase, setting up an account, and uh, purchasing some if you do need to, uh, 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 to purchase your own RAM. That's scary talk. <laughs> it's really not it like no, not. no no step in anything that I just described is scary. <laughs> I, I promise. Um, and of course, and this is the thing. Well, and we should really, we should do this. We should make sure that, 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 you know, I help you guys walk through that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that when people inevitably come to you guys with that same question, like, Oh my God, joining Coinbase is crazy. And you're like, nah, it's just not, if they're the biggest thing in the United States, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a pretty good lead into our next question. Okay. Uh, Stu actually asked this question. What's the difference between the EOS Link wallet, something like Binance and Coinbase? I, I love this question. And I got into a little bit with, um, with the decentralized exchanges. With those wallets, um, you'll hear a lot of, we, and, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about the private key, right? So your private key, like when you first make an account, it generates a private key for you. Um, obviously you want to make sure that that is backed up somewhere super safe, whether in an encrypted email to yourself or into something like LastPass, whatever it is, you can even write it out if you want to. I just would never do that because I would freaking lose it. <laughs> it's just, I got to make everything digital. Um, but that private key can be plugged into any EOS wallet and it's all of your uh, money. It's all of your, it's your entire account, right? So the way that that's different from a Coinbase or a Binance is that when you send money to to uh, uh, an account in Binance, they have all of your money. You have to ask for it back, right? So the private key for that money is theirs. And what that's you'll hear, it, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Where this is literally like, uh, the EOS Links wallet is like having perfect total control of your money in real time. It's like in, in every sense of the word yours, right? As long as you have that private key, your phone could die in a fire and you could just go plug that private key into anything else and it's still all there, right? Whereas, you know, if Binance were to, well, and this is, and Binance and Coinbase, this isn't going to be an issue, but there have been some tiny exchanges where people have just disappeared. They just pull what are called exit scams and, you know, 10, $15 million worth of cryptocurrency is just kind of lost to the ether. Um, interestingly enough, that's not possible in EOS uh, because what happens in EOS 
is you have those 21 block producers and they can actually decide to go in, you know, if, if they litigate it as, as being appropriate, they can go in and actually fix the, uh, the blockchain if, if really, really nefarious actors try and do anything super bad. Um, which, of course, some people see as a, you know, kind of governmental control or whatever. But I, my primary concern has always just been about the, the end user like you guys, frankly. So, you know, it's sort of a, a, a best of both worlds kind of scenario. I'm sorry, I kind of took, kind of took that down a little bit of a, a regression. Okay. Yeah. So can your private key be used in multiple wallets at the same time? 100%, yes. Um, most of my active wallets I have in Scatter. You can go to get-scatter.com. Do not go to any other website to get that. It's uh, they actually, uh, and I think it's actually down now, but uh, about six months ago, they actually had a copycat website where they were giving versions of Scatter away that would just take your private key. Yeah. Oh. So get-scatter.com. And they're really, really good. Their, their wallet keeps getting better. Um, I use it uh, uh, all the time. Uh, and there's actually a desktop wallet for EOS Links that, uh, that's coming out. Uh, Fred Kruger, who's the CEO, uh, I've been talking to him about the desktop wallet, and, and it's going to be very, very good. It's already good now, but it's, it's almost going to be like a mini browser for all of the applications that are going to be available on the EOS blockchain. Um, and there's uh, like a meet, meet.one uh, wallet, which is the first sort of wallet like EOS Links that I tried, but it's actually Chinese and uh, translates weirdly every once in a while, but it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Um, there, and there's token pocket that's just coming out, you know, so there's, there's all sorts of different ones. You could plug your private key into all of them at the same time if you wanted to, um, and, 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 and use them all. I do want to talk about, cause I don't know if you guys have had, is there any questions in there about, uh, cold wallets and hot wallets? Okay. So let's, let's, let's talk about that. This is a very, this is a very important idea. Like, let's say, you know, I mean, <laughs> fuck, let's just say shippled moves just for fun shipple like mars is which is what we're gonna say um and you and you've got you know suddenly you've got you know real money that you know is so if somebody stole it you'd be very upset right what i would recommend doing and what all of us in the in the development team are going to be doing is you're, we're gonna have what's called a hot wallet and a cold wallet a cold wallet you can uh, actually create it offline so it's never actually on the internet you just get that string of digits that is your private key and your EOS uh, account name, right? Uh, and you can send it basically the large amounts of money to it. And that actual string is never on the internet, right? And you don't actually use it to transact with anyone at all except for the wallet that you create that is known as your hot wallet, right? So that's the wallet where you're going to use it for Dmail and you're going to use it for all the apps that we create. It's kind of your, your identity your hot wallet where you would use that to shill people or to tip people or whatever. Uh, it's that your active wallet, right? So you've got one that's holding all of your money. That's kind of your own private bank that you're, you know, you're not giving the, the EOS account name out, uh, for it out to anyone. You're not anything like that, right? It's literally just uh, having it in cold storage, just a little bit more uh, uh, secure, <clears throat> you know, assuming that it's possible that you might get hacked in the future. Uh, but then your your hot wallet will just be like the wallet that you have in your pocket, right? If you lost that, you lose a hundred bucks, big freaking deal, no big deal. You can just make a new one and you're good to go. So that that's something that I think we'll probably talk about more as as you know the year or two kind of goes. Having that idea of having a hot wallet and a, a cold wallet for now. I mean, nobody really has any real money in those anyway, so it's they're all just kind of hot wallets. Right. No, that's really cool. I'm I'm excited to hear more about that. It seems like. You know, with, with people running around with tens of twenties of millions of shill. <laughs> <laughs> right. It might be something right. that they need. Well, uh, and I'm also going to be uh, running, because uh, I'm doing some research on it right now, but there's something called multi-sig that you can do with, uh, with, with EOS uh, uh, wallets where it's multi-signature. So I can actually have active keys um, and owner keys on the uh, the large sort of industrial accounts that we're using for for the sort of machine that is Shipple. Um, and so it's going to actually require uh, multiple signatures on each. So instead of having a hot wallet and a cold wallet, I can actually have three separate accounts, hold them all in different places. Um, and, and all of those uh, uh, private keys would be required to vote on any action that happens on any of those accounts. So there, there's there's like the normal security that you guys would use and i'm actually starting to learn about levels of security that are like just stupid good that's cool yeah um, you kind of touched on this earlier um but uh cesar peters wanted to know are there any plans to make uh shill trade on the exchanges yes 
Yeah. So the rule of thumb that we've been going on, and I reserve the right to change this at any time, but I really don't think that I will, um, is we want to get base camp to 10,000 people. Um, before that, like once we're at about 8,000, I've actually uh, narrowed down the first couple of exchanges that I would like to get Shipple on. Um, and I'm actually talking to the people that run those already. Uh, and, it, and it shouldn't be too much of a challenge to accomplish that, which like it still boggles my mind that that's even possible. Uh, but uh, just because it, it has never been this way before, like it's, it's become very democratic. So the, the, yeah, the, the general idea is um, I will not list until after base camp hits 10,000 um, and then we'll start to seriously consider it. But that's sort of the, the demarcation line that, uh, uh, that we have for that. But yeah, it's, eventually it's going to be on an exchange. I've heard you use the word DEX. Is that, is that an exchange? Yes. It's a decentralized okay. exchange. Okay. Yeah. Also, fantastic question. Are there a bunch of them? Yeah. So go to your EOS Links wallet and hit explore. And then anything with like EX at the end of it, look at it. I think there's five or six uh, oh, okay. EXs attached to the EOS Links wallet. Yeah. So we've, we've actually, not only is it possible for us to get it on a decentralized exchange, which is mental, but we have six to choose from right now, hmm. which is wow. insane. So this is off, off the spreadsheet, but I'd heard you talk about the white papers. Yeah. So there's something that needs to be done before you can list. Y yes ish okay. um so a, a white paper is a just like a very technical description of what your project is right and so people have been asking me to make a white paper for for uh uh for shipple and like right now it would the principles that are designing what we're doing would fit on one page right we made a token it's all about community and we're going to try and do as many cool things with it as possible white paper over Right, but then people want to under like there's you're supposed to add in like what's the technology you're using EOS like that's just, that's it right like so the ordinary ways that people make really flowery hyper technical white papers to a, a, a approach um, you know what are known as whales like really really high end investors um, I don't want any of them uh, Stella's worked on a couple projects that uh, have have gone south frankly because of uh, you know, being in that situation where people are investing hundreds of thousands of dollars and then they're trying to control where it goes. Here's the thing. We don't know where this is going and I don't want to know, right? Like I, I don't want to pre-design some lie, frankly, about what Shipple is going to be when all we have right now are really, really good ideas. And by the time it launches on a DEX, we could have a hundred better ideas and I don't know, right? So um, Kurt, who uh, created Morty's and Dmail, just tweeted out two days ago. He said, you know what? I'm over white papers. Uh, my product is my white paper. And uh, yeah. I think that's, that's probably the way we're going to go. Now, that said, secretly, we've had a, a, a cryptocurrency writer working on a satire version um, of a white paper that will be 100% bullshit. Um, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about releasing it now because when we first came out with this idea, you know, uh, Shipple was still 100% a joke. And now it sort of really sucks at being 100% a joke. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're playing around with different ideas. But, yeah, long story short, I mean, you guys don't care about a white paper. And so, honestly, I don't. That's kind of where it's at, right? The, the people that are, are part of the community, um, some of them ask it. And you'll notice that there are people that have been in cryptocurrency for a while and they want to dig into like the nuts and bolts of exactly who the team is and exactly what we're going to do. And here's the thing, like the team's changing and I don't know. So, mm. yeah, cool. Yeah. So, uh, again, you touched on this earlier, but if you could just expand on a little bit, uh, sure. is there a plan to dis decrease the circulating number of shells? So, why? There's two different versions of, 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 so people, when they talk about it decreasing the, 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 the supply, they can be talking about decreasing the circulating supply or decreasing the absolute supply. So I'll describe both of those things. So like the, the absolute supply of Shipple is 105 billion, right? So it's 5 billion that's, that's uh, locked up in my mother EOS uh, sort of business account. Uh, and then 100 billion just copying Ripple that we're going to do all sorts of cool things with. And we can describe that later if you want. Um, so we are, it, it's possible that there is going to be some capacity to burn the maximum supply at basically copying the very slow rate that Ripple uses. Um, a lot of people in the cryptocurrency space, you know, they, they accrue a lot of value to those burning events. 
because it means that there's less around and there's more people. If so, de facto, the value must be going up, right? I'm not super bought into that being a real mechanism, um, but it, it's out there and, and that may happen in the future in a very organized and pre-discussed way. Like if I do it, I'm going to let everyone know that it's going to happen before it happens. Right. Um, the primary way of decreasing circulating supply that we're going to use is through incentivized staking. So, you know, the staking uh, 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 beta test that we did, um, you know, was, was uh, quite frankly, far too generous. Everybody who got in on that lucked the hell out <clears throat> and it's never going to be that way again. Um, but it will get honored. Uh, we, uh, we, we have about 700 million staked um, and it took about 48 hours to get to that point. Um, and about 20% of it, uh, is, you know, stuff that people staked and, and, and 80% of it is rewards. <laughs> so it was, yeah. That was, that was a little excessive. Um, but yep. that's cause people, people are, are, you know, you have the option to lock it up for a short period of time and get a small reward or a pretty fricking long in cryptocurrency, like six years is a really long time. Um, but about as long as I think it's going to take to, to really get, um, you know, if, if this goes the way of the doge or the way of other projects that have worked seriously, six years is where, you know, if it's worth anything, it might be worth fuck you money. So, so I think the question was oh, increasing, yeah. right? Was the question, are we going to increase? No, I think it was, was decrease. 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 Yeah, decrease. Yeah. It, it will, I guarantee you it will never increase. Right. Oh. Yeah, that, that's definitely so. And that, that staking, we're going to have staking uh, um, a, a mechanism, not a manual thing, but an actual uh, uh, application um, that will be an actual contract that you'll be able to see on the blockchain um, that will allow people to, uh, uh, to, to stake their shipple uh, right up until the point where we hit the decks and probably after that, depending on what the budget is. And what's cool is one of the things that we're going to be doing uh, uh, Tuesday when Dino and I do our, our work hours, which has become this cool tradition, um, I'm going to actually separate all the, the, the stuff in our alpha account into what the budgets are for each, each step. So you're going to be able to go to blocks.io and literally see what my game plan is in advance. Uh, and so, you know, the game plan to get all the way to 10,000, I budgeted 10 billion to launch. So that's where we're about 2.7 billion out now. Um, and, and to get to 10, uh, uh, 10,000 people at base camp, I've budgeted 10 billion. I'm actually going to budget 10 billion for staking rewards as well. Um, which if we manage it properly is going to lock up anywhere from between 25 to 45% of circulating supply. Um, and, and it will lock it up for, for literally years, uh, which, uh, will be unbelievable. I mean, if you believe that we're never going to quit and we're going to keep doing this, um, it, it's just going to be super, super smart to, to put it in for, for as long as you can. Right. I staked for six years, so I'm in for the long haul. There you go. <laughs> that was you? That was you. So, and this is the thing, too. Like, and this is why I have to, 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 to manage it and sort of consider how we're going to do it. Um, that Adrian Alvalaris, who, you know, he bought uh, $100 million worth, right? So, he, he, if you go onto the thing, his name pops, pops right up there. He wanted to stake all of it for the maximum amount of time, which is like 10% of my entire budget. <laughs> no. And this is the thing, the, the reason why we want to do this, right, is when we hit the exchange, a lot of people are incentivized to sell because suddenly in their wallets, there's something that has a number against it where you can actually purchase, you know, XYZ number of EOS or whatever it is. There's going to be a lot of incentive to sell. So it's going to be on us to be creating such an amazing ecosystem that, that everybody's going to feel like, oh my God, you'd have to be insane. That's like selling Bitcoin at five cents, right? Okay. So that's exactly. our, our, uh, our job. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So the next part is all about crypto and blockchain and things like that. So all right. um, Kyle Payne asked, uh, explain what a blockchain is and how it fits into the puzzle of Bitcoin and other major cryptos. Okay. So there are a few three to four minute videos um, that we can pick from that will explain this better than I can. And we should link to them in uh, okay, cool. .edu. Um, yeah. So the best way to understand this, the blockchain idea, um, is that you guys all know how like a spreadsheet works or a ledger works, right? You know, you've got uh, uh, um, a bunch of people and a kind of money or a something, something that you want to write down. Um, and when you, like it's, uh, using a bank as an analogy, if I were to send some money to Sue, right? The, the ledger that's at my bank notices that my number went down in my number account, right? And Sue's number and her number account at the other bank is going to go up, right? So that's just some data that's being exchanged. 
Um, the way a blockchain works is instead of having one bank's computer and another bank's computer, it has between dozens and in Bitcoin's case, like tens of thousands of uh, computers all running the same application at the same time. And so it confirms over the entire network of all of those computers put together, all of those transactions. And the way it does that by be, uh, creating a chain of blocks of transactions. So in Bitcoin's case, which is one of the, one of the simplest ones, um, you know, it, it, as you do Bitcoin transactions, it's writing them onto what's called the ledger, right? Uh, and you'll notice in a Bitcoin wallet, it's, it's asking for confirmation. So the, the, uh, the transaction isn't finished until you have, say, six confirmed transactions, which are six computers on the network that have said, yes, this happened, right? And it, it, every 10 minutes, it takes that entire list of transactions and closes it off so that it could never be altered and attaches it to a chain of all of the other blocks. So every 10 minutes, a list of transactions gets attached to the blockchain. And then all of the computers in the network over time all have to agree on the numbers. So that's why like literally the NSA tried to figure out how to hack Bitcoin and it said they could hack one block every 10,000 years. Oh my gosh. Right, like, because you're hacking every, you know, every computer that's on the network, right? So a little bit of a different, different way to think about it. EOS, instead of using just the, 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 you know, really energy and computer intense stuff of the decentralized network that, that Bitcoin is using, um, like they're using the electricity of Sweden right now to, to secure the Bitcoin network. It's, it's pretty mental. These guys decided to do something called delegated proof of stake. So basically what that means is we get to vote on the, on the 21 uh, companies that are running the computers that are running the network. So instead of tens of thousands, it's just 21. And they're very secure. And if we don't like them, we can vote them out, right? So every single EOS that you own acts as a little voter. Uh, and we can vote back and forth to see who we want to have active, uh, uh, actively running the, uh, the network. So it's, it's sort of this really people-heavy, democracy-heavy version um, of what Bitcoin solved with pure math and computing power. When, when people vote on those things, uh, does the number of coins that you hold or tokens that you hold have an effect on how it, are the yes. votes weighted? Yes. They're, they're, um, yeah. And, and I, I haven't dug into this in the last little while, and I think they've made some changes recently. But yeah, I think it's one EOS, one vote at this point. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the latest controversy, controversy? That it? I'm just kidding. Um, is uh, some of the block producers started uh, paying people to to uh, to get their vote, um, and so a lot of the people in the community came down on either side. I'm quite frankly entirely okay with the idea of a block producer paying me to get my vote. Um, you know, if you want to be altruistic about it, you can just go and do it. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so you know, it, it's very very democracy heavy and sometimes very messy because of it. Because I don't know if you've seen democracy, but it's a mess. But it it it, it produces really interesting results. It's the reason. Having this setup is the reason why EOS is literally like hundreds of times faster than Ethereum um, and probably a thousand times faster than Bitcoin. So, cool. yeah. Uh, here's another excellent Sue question. Uh, can you explain to those of us who are really new what dips are? And, <laughs> yeah. and why you should buy them? And yeah, and then following on from that, Mike Rivera asked, how do you or everyone feel about buying Okay, so my yeah, buying buying the dip is all about every time Bitcoin goes down or any cryptocurrency, um, you want to buy the dip. Now, as a as a uh, for anyone that is trading or investing, you have to go do your own research and you have to be super smart about this because there are people that that would go out and like on Pixios, for example, that is effectively a Silicon Valley startup, right? with a tiny market cap and really, really low uh, liquidity, which means there's low you know, uh, uh, ability to sell large amounts back and forth. Um, I know one guy that put his life saving as a server of $12,000 into it. One person who invested 100,000 sold everything and they dropped the price by 95%. Now, do you, do you buy that dip? I mean, not with your fucking life savings, right? So this is the thing, like the, the investing in this era, in this, this type of stuff, can and will, if you do it properly, net you the same kind of gains as if you were first round investing in Twitter. But everybody, everybody who invested in Twitter 
was also invested in 50 other startups and 49 of them failed. Right. So when people say buying the dip, you know, it, it, it's excruciatingly important that you learn how to invest before you even think about trying to answer that question. Right now, that's the cautionary part of this tale. Let's talk Bitcoin. Every single time Bitcoin goes down by 85%, if you bought it, you'd be rich seven years later. That's just a fact, right? So now you have to make, you have to make the guess. If it drops, like it just recently dropped 85% last year, right? So you know, is the market that much different now that you wouldn't want to buy that massive dip? Now, there's still people today that are terrified of cryptocurrency because they held, bought at the top and lost all their money or whatever, and they're whining and complaining about it. And all I've been telling them is, you know, it dropped from a thousand dollars down to a hundred dollars. Would you have bought it at a hundred? Of course you would. It went from 2000 down to 200. Would you have bought it? Of course you would. Now I should have and didn't. And which is why I'm still freaking out about it to this day. <laughs> Cause I lost a million dollars by not pulling the trigger on that trade. Like literally a million dollars, um, which still hurts my feelings. So when, when people talk about buying the dip and of course, you know, I created Haystack 10, which is an index fund that is like Bitcoin, but better. It's just is the top 10. What I would say about that is that if you think that cryptocurrency is, is increasing and by that is, are there more people using wallets all the time? If that answer is yes, then you always want to buy the dip. Even, even if it's, it's it like really, really deep and more so if it's really, really deep. Right. But that's on like the big, the, like the full ecosystem, like doing an index fund that's going to adapt to what's in that top 10 or doing Bitcoin that for the foreseeable future is going to be the reserve currency of the space. Um, you know, I think, I think that, that traditionally has been something that would make you money. I think somebody told me like, like Bitcoin right now would have been um, profitable to purchase on all but 60 days of its entire existence. Right. So 60 days out of 11 years, um, were a bad time to buy Bitcoin. The rest of the days were really good. So hopefully that helps with the whole buy the dip situation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, the yeah. biggest thing is, is like if people will tell you to buy the dip on Ripple and those people are stupid, right? <laughs> That's just, you know, because they're, they're, they, they, they don't know. And this is the thing, like people will still make money on Ripple over the next couple of years but as many people will lose it because it never increases in value over a, a, a two or three year period of time, it'll spike like probably 300%. Like it'll go up three X, but it'll give every bit of it back because it's all fake. Right. Whereas Ethereum was like $2 four years ago. Right. And it's like 400, whatever it is, it could easily go 10 X. Right. I think Ethereum is going to be 200 in the next five years. It's $4 right now. Right. So there, there, there are things in the space that, that, you can see the development going on um, and, and have a reasonable case for why the value is going to, to, to you know, go up in a way that, that we've seen in the past. And that's why, I mean, the second that Ethereum, or, sorry, EOS dipped down to, to $4 this last time, um, I put all of Dino's future pay in it. Yes. Cool. And, and it was, you know, the right thing to do. Right. Definitely. Why, why are they and valued? More. <laughs> How long oh, do you have? Oh, there you go. <laughs> so oh, and this is, <clears throat> I, I... no, that's that's the the. I mean, as usual, Sue, you asked the one question <laughs> that is the underpinning of the entire existence of the Shipple experiment. Yes. Why does anyone value any of this but, at all? I know, and I, I, you know, it's like coming in on this. I get the value of Shipple because it's fun and it's a community, and we're doing fun stuff with it. Right. We're sitting at the cool table. <laughs> but uh, what is, why is Bitcoin so expensive? So that's. What's the value of that? Yeah. There, there's a few different ways to answer it. I used to think um, I was really bought into what's called the mining break even cost. Um, so to mine one Bitcoin costs in electricity and computing power averaged out about $5,000 per Bitcoin right now, right? Okay. Um, and because the, the more computers that you're plugging into the network, the difficulty that, the, the, uh, that, that it is, like, the, like basically the more computers that plug into the network, the more you need, right? So it's got this interesting way of, of keeping up with 
uh, the amount of computing power that's getting plugged into it because anyone can. You could plug a supercomputer into it tomorrow um, and, and that'll have an effect on, on the difficulty within two or three 10-minute blocks. So the cost of it keeps going up. Now, so that, now okay, now here comes my yeah. stupid question no, again. No, denied. To, no mine, to mine that Bitcoin, that's creating a block on the blockchain, right? Sorry, could you repeat that? The mining of the Bitcoin yes. and that big cost that's just the creation of the block on the blockchain. Uh, so that's, that's the running of the network. The reason why it takes so much computing power is that every computer that's attached to the network is trying to guess a very large number. So that's actually how they encrypt it. So all, these, all this computing power is literally trying to guess a number with like, I don't know, a thousand digits or some ridiculous thing. And it's literally guessing millions of numbers a second. So if you hear the term hash rate, that's what that means. It's literally guessing millions of uh, numbers a second. And, and I've been to a huge mining operation. There's specially designed uh, uh, computers that are only running the Bitcoin algorithm, guessing number after number after number after number. And, and why are we doing that? So basically, that was, that was the way, the initial way that you could make a currency that no government could ever attack. Um, and that no one could ever own, although that's kind of arguable. We don't have to get into that. Uh, but it's, it's essentially this thing that exists as pure math on the internet that adapts automatically to any new situation. Um, and is, is, is deflationary in the sense that it's got having events. We can get into that later. But it's basically, it's the only currency that's ever existed as a pure construct outside of human help. So that's, that's why it requires all so of that. that number is always changing. So and the computers are always trying to catch it. That's exactly every 10 minutes. It's new. So every 10 minutes. So and we might as well get into having to do So every 10 minutes you get something called a block reward, right? When Bitcoin first started, it was 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. And about four years later, it goes through what's called a halving event. So now um, every 10 minutes, it's 25 Bitcoin. And you can actually track, I'll show you guys, I'll send you guys the, uh, the, the graph on this. You can track the value of Bitcoin after each one of the halving events. And it's always real good um, because you're, you're reducing the amount of supply that's coming online uh, while the number of wallets are constantly going up, right? So every, oh, every four years that happens right now, it's 12 and a half. It's going to go down to 6.25, but that's every 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's all the computers are trying to guess the number. The one computer that guesses the number gets all of the Bitcoin for that 10 minute block. Oh, so it could be anybody. Yep. Now, unfortunately, and this is true, you used to be able to mine Bitcoin with a laptop, if, and you still could, but it would take you about a million years to mine one Bitcoin, statistically speaking, with a laptop. Because, the, 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 yeah, the, the rooms full of computers they have mining it right now are, are mind-boggling. It's, it's intense. It's really intense. Huge but to go back to your point, though, as far as the value is concerned, you know, like, I don't the, get what. well, no, and here, and this is, this is, dude, this is the whole, this is for all the marbles, this question, right? Because, like, I used to think that Bitcoin had this inherent value because of the math and because of the way that it was orchestrated. And I honestly don't believe that anymore because the vast majority of people that are buying Bitcoin for $8,000 or $10,000 per Bitcoin have no idea what the inherent value is. So that's not why they're buying it. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're, they're buying it because there is enough capacity for trust that it will not be fucked with. I think that's a big part of it, right? Um, and looking at the chart, there is an exceptionally reasonable assumption that the value of this asset will go up over time. And it works. It's a, it's a, it's a token that has wallets that are functional and securable and safe. And honestly, my supposition and part of the organizing principle of, of why Shipple is the way it is, is that it just works. And I'm asking the question, you know, every single thing that gets traded on any decentralized exchange or DEX or any exchange for cryptocurrency is being traded on a pure market basis, which means that Sue decides that she wants it for whatever reason, whatever narrative or white paper you read or, you know, meme you saw for Doge or whatever it is, right? You have all of your own reasons. I have all of my own reasons to sell it. And that's it. So, so it's just, it's just has an inherent financial value amongst all these people. So, yeah. So it's not even inherent. It's like, it's like a, a, a group consensus 
of what the value is. And honestly, that's actually the, that's actually true for every, everything that isn't the U S dollar basically. Right. And I think wall street works in exactly the same way. We, you know, wall street people will tell you a narrative about, you know, P and E uh, ratios and all these other things. They're just telling a story. That's like saying, you know, me coming out and saying that, Hey, you know, triples worth 10 bucks a million because it's Tuesday and fuck off. Like could say, what I want. you know what I mean? Like that, those are the limits of the thing that we're testing. You know, like, can we all decide openly to just decide this thing has this value at this time? Um, as opposed to people coming together randomly, which is sort of how it works right now. It's like, look at Corey's background on his video right now. <laughs> Collectively, people can create value. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> at least with triple. Right. And that's, I think, like, you know, th there were some questions that I wanted to test to see how they would work. I'll tell you right now, it's working a hundred times faster, better, and more fun than I ever would have guessed. Like, cause it, people actually want to engage in this, this process. Um, right. And that, that's really fun. But yeah, Sue, so keep, keep thinking about that all the time. Cause that really, that, that's the, the, I think that at, you know, if there's a box in the middle of the maze that is triple inside that box is the answer to that question. Awesome. That actually leads us really well into the next section of questions. Cause it's all about triple now. All right. And the first one's kind of a big one. Uh, it's asking why should people invest time and money with Shuffle? Why? Whew. Yeah. Whew. Oh, why? That's, okay, so, that's somebody who hasn't done it yet. <laughs> that, thank you for that, too. So, and this is the thing. Like, I think the time, the time is an easier answer, right? Why would you invest time? There, there, you do get that dopamine rush of being, you know, part of the community and the amount of creativity that it woke up in people just because of the way that it sort of organically decided to start taking shape. I mean, didn't see that coming, right? Like it, that, you know, from me more is to the, to the gratitude function to people naturally wanted to learn and teach at the same time. That's you guys. And you know, like that, you know, all of that stuff, you just couldn't, you just couldn't see that coming. So the amount of, of not people, but amazing people who are putting time and energy and, and heart into this, is mind boggling and it's super fun and gratifying. And I, I sort of think I get the impression that people are doing that because other people are doing it as well. I, I don't, I, I don't have a good answer for that. <laughs> to be honest. Like what the hell are you, all of you people doing here? But it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fun and it's, and it's interesting. And you know, maybe part of it for me is I don't know where it's going to go. Um, but you know, I, I, I kind of have the sense of, of th what's possible, I guess. Mm. So that, that might be part of it. And on, on the investor side, it, it's kind of the same answer, right? Like there are cryptocurrencies that have gone to dozens of millions of market cap, like dozens of millions of US dollars of market cap that had nothing on Shipple. Nothing. Like in any way. Like they were, they were like garbage in, garbage out, pointless. And, you know, people wanted to invest in it because, you know, they thought it was going to be the next Bitcoin or whatever. And people lied about it and said things like that, which is obviously something that we're never going to do. Like, I, I you know, I want to caution anyone. And I do. I talk to everybody who, who, who buys it and says, listen, like, you're going to find all sorts of people that are going to make you promises. I can't make you any of it. I have like a really, really interesting suspicion of where all this could go. But I don't know. And anyone that tells, tells you that they do is lying. They don't know either. Right. Cause that's the thing we could throw this thing on a Dex and everybody could decide to sell all at once right down to zero. We don't know. Now, do I think that's likely? No. And that's the, that's the game, right? Like that's the, the, you know, the whole point is to try and create that, that kind of value. Um, but yeah. Oh, so I, I never, I didn't look at that poll the other day about um, how much would you sell yep. your triple for? The one okay. that won was $30. Oh, so a million right. for thirty yep. dollars. So I'm I'm about to do a having <laughs> event to where you're only going to be able to get it from me for twenty, and already the consensus among you, the community, is thirty, or you just wouldn't even consider it. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> an that's an important level, right? Like if we if we get to that point, and that's still the feeling, uh, once we hit a decentralized exchange, um, then we're going to be set up very very interestingly to 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 do some interesting things right out of the gate on that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's funny though, because I, I sat there and thought, well, but wait a minute, I got so much shipple. I don't want to trade it for money. <laughs> right? And seriously, like the shipple is, it, it means it, it does have a value. It does, you know, right. 
Yeah. And that's, and that really is the answer to your previous question, right? Like why does any of this have value? Well, cause you have amount that you, you, you have an amount that you would buy it for and you have an amount that you would sell it for and they're not the same. Right. That's really yeah. interesting. Right. Yeah. And so that's going to, that we're going to have a thousand to 10,000 people that have that same sort of argument going on in their head. And the, sh- the price of Shipwell at any given point in time will be the gestalt of every single one of our opinions. Yeah. But, there, but I, I see the value in our different tribes and, you know, the meme wars, the fitness stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it has changed people. It has changed motivation for people. It has for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and, and real quick, I mean, this is, this is exactly um, what we were hoping for was that Shipple would be um, something that you couldn't you couldn't consider the value of Shipple without considering the value of the community that supports it and that exactly. surrounds it. And so they're, they're entwined. You know the 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 tribes, the every every aspect of the community um, plays a large role in the value. And this is exactly what you know we were hoping for at the very beginning. And, I, and it makes me feel very uh, satisfied to hear you say that because that's what we were hoping for is that you couldn't think about Shill without thinking about the community behind it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's absolutely the okay. case. Yeah. yeah. Like there's, there's, there's not only meaning, like a meaningful transaction, like you bought a rock, which is fantastic for X amount of, uh, X amount of, uh, boink, um, X amount of, uh, of Shipple. Um, but yeah, that, that there's this layer of meaning that, that it's become a collector's item instantaneously. Mm. The reason why it's a collector's item is, you know, because Jess is a superhero that, that is, is, uh, uh, you know, starting shipple.edu that's going to have 5,000 people in it someday. Right. Mm, right. You know, it, it, it it's, it's going to have all of those little interlinking things that will, will be sort of artifacts of, of, of the way that this value percolates throughout the, throughout the community. And this is the thing guys, like. I think the, these are the basic ideas of this. When we're at 10,000, we need to ask this question again because we're going to have completely different answers, I think, about the way that, not about the principle, but about the way that that principle is, is uh, sort of being witnessed in the, in, in the way that all this stuff works. I just, that's, we don't even know. And that's the exciting thing is that right? it's growing and changing so much every day. That's right. I mean, how many months has it been since we started? Uh, it's been two. It's two. It's two it's months. Been two months. <laughs> yeah, it's like a year. It's been it's been two months. It genuinely it, feels like a year. It's crazy. It does it's, feel longer. Yeah. yeah. Generally speaking, the the question at at first was, you know, you know, what the f is Shipple? and now the question is, how do I get it? Right. You know, <laughs> what that's isn't it? More of the question. It's that's it's. True. Changed. And week by week, it's 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 considerably changing and, and morphing. Um, it it feels like it's been a year. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Two months, four days. <laughs> so this next question, um, in the next few, actually talks about real world uses and real world real use no real use cases of Shipple. Okay. So what is the market of Shipple? Uh, what industry is Shipple could disrupt? Yeah, the, the what industry could Shipple disrupt? I mean, banks. Well, like at the core, I mean, yes, like because that's the thing. Like you know, Bitcoin's got a story about its own value, uh, but at the end of the day, it's just something that 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 uh, um, you know can be traded and kept private, right? Um, Shipple is absolutely, that's why like the whole technology section for Shipple, if we do a white paper, is just going to be all the technology upon which it's built because it's got all of the same technology and more that Bitcoin has access to, which means that we are actually in direct comp- competition with banks, all of them, all at the same time. Um, don't tell the SEC this, but because we're all imbuing this thing with value, uh, the Federal Reserve should be pissed at us. <laughs> But at the same time, we, we also imbue Beanie Babies with value so they can just take a chill pill on that one. Right. Um, yeah, or that. So, so that, like, in, in, a, in a philosophical sense, I think that's sort of the, the market we're in. But I think the industry that we're disrupting hasn't even been invented yet. Um, the, you know, like, 
Doge is the the next you know closest competitor to the kind of open source community value token that I've ever seen. Um, but the marketplace and the use cases is where that's something that I spend most of my time thinking about. Um, is the way to make sure that people aren't automatically selling it is to make sure that there's also a really good vested interest for people to buy it to use it for something specific. Now, what what that could be is we're going to have a merch department where you can buy t-shirts and stuff like that. You're only going to be able to do it with Shipple. Or you'll, you'll get a massive discount if you use Shipple, right? So there's going to be a, a huge vested interest to, uh, to do that. Um, we're also going to have a situation where, um, you know, we're going to eventually create an application out of Memoirs so that it's like a, a gamified game on your phone, right? So that you're going to be able to build teams, you're going to be do all these things or whatever, but it's actually going to cost little tiny bits of Shipple to play. Right. So where, you know, we're used to getting five or 10,000 shipple for stuff. It'll be like 10 or a hundred uh, to post a meme. It'll be like a negligible amount, but you'll need it to do it. Right. But okay, where there's I also pick Rob to be on my team. <laughs> That's okay. If you, and seriously, like you can pick whatever teams you want to pick, but way to just like win for all time. <laughs> oh God, that'd be hilarious. Uh, and if that doesn't make any sense, pay attention to me more as Friday nights at 9 PM. On yeah, be there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's good stuff. So that's, that's, that's some of it. Um, with, with the fitness dApp, we're, we're going to create some, uh, some UK use uh, out of that as well. But basically, we're going to have it set up so that and, – and, and we're always open to ways to make this – to basically make more use cases, to have a bigger sort of shipple ecosystem. Um, we want to have as many excuses for people to have to go, to want to go to an exchange to buy shipple to go and do something else. Right. So, so that, that's something that, that is going to be on our minds. Well, for the rest of the time that Shipple is a thing. So one of the questions, um, when it was first asked, the question was, what are the use cases of Shipple? And then you had added, but you wanted to talk about the technical legal potential. Yeah. So the, we're, we're designating, designating Shipple as what's called a utility token. Right. Um, and we already have that utility uh, 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 legally because, you know, it, it, to get stickers from us, you get a discount if you have Shipple, right? So that's, that's, we've already sort of established it as that. Um, and before we launch on a DEX, I'm actually going to be getting an official, like I'm going to have to spend money on this, uh, an official legal opinion talking about the many different kinds of utility cases uh, for that. Because if you don't do that, um, then it looks to the SEC as if what you've really done is released uh, um, you know, basically a stock that just happens to be a cryptocurrency, right? So like if we're building this uh, and people are investing in this token um, because they think that uh, I'm going to build the most amazing um, application in the history of the world and therefore the token itself will be worth more, um, then in the United States, the SEC would be within its legal rights to shut us down um, completely. Uh, so obviously that's something that, that I spend a great deal of time thinking about as well, which is why we talk about use cases and utility all the fucking time. Cause it just, it has to be that way. It has to be the situation where, um, at core, um, nobody is ever making any promises or suggestions that the value of ship will go up in any way, shape or form. And we never will. Right. We have suspicions about it. We can make, you know, statements about the fact that if more people are using it and there's you know, a consistent amount that something may happen to value, but we don't know. Right. So that, that we have to be super careful about that shit. Uh, but then it's actually being used, right? If you want to play meme wars, you're going to have to use Shipple uh, to do it. And if you don't have any Shipple, you're gonna have to find somebody to either give it to you or you're gonna have to buy it. And that's just the way it's going to go. Right. Um, and that's going to be true times every use case that we come up with. Uh, for the ecosystem and there could very well be you know one per tribe for all we know so legally that's it's an extremely important distinction for us okay cool um what services do you see shipple being able to pay for in the future all of them everything always didn't yeah. somebody pay their rent with shipple uh, yes. yeah uh so i i can envision and this is like this is crazy talk well i just caveat okay legit because there's, there's, there's so many mountain ranges between us and this. But philosophically, it should not be impossible to find a company like the company that has created credit cards for Coinbase, actually attach Shipple to a bank, right? Some bank somewhere, um, and have credit cards that will allow you to use your Shipple balance to pay for anything that you want to pay for, right? 
um, we could have a network of stores that only take Shipple. Uh, maybe in a location like Main Street, Newport Ritchie, right? And again, like that's a heavy lift and it's like years and years and years away. But again, it's not impossible. And so that, that's sort of part of the, the back end goal is that we would like to have this. Pos- and, they, and here's the other thing. <clears throat> As the decentralized exchanges become more popular and people understand exactly what's just happened because it is epic. Not only could you use Shipple to purchase anything that you use Bitcoin to purchase, right? So that would, would, would be automatic. Um, I think that within two to five years, say just like you have EOS, but I want to send you Shipple. Um, we do a transaction. I buy some more rocks from you. You won't even ask me what I'm paying with. You're just going to say, hey, it costs this much. I'm going to send you Shipple. You're going to get EOS and you'll never know. Right? Times that by every single possible currency on earth all at once and it'll just disappear. I will have value X. I'm going to, I'm going to see your prices in what I have. I'm going to see your prices in Shipple because it's just data. Right. And you'll never even know that I'm holding Shipple. I'm just going to send you my Shipple and you're on your wallet. You're only accepting EOS and it'll just take that. But I think that's actually going to be true for what's called tether us uh, dollars. Right. But in this sense, or euros or anything. So it could very well get to the point where everybody's got a payment system that is sort of unified, like the unified field theory of payments, right? So it's like Samsung Pay or whatever it is that automatically connects to a network that's on your phone that lets you do that with basically anything at all. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I have a suspicion that it will. Right. So that'd be awesome. It'd be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it's it. <laughs> As, even as somebody that's just very new to it, this, the, the future and, and the things that are possible are just so exciting to me. Um, so we're coming down to the last few questions yep. here. So these are kind of the wrap up things. Um, do you guys need help? Yes. So what do you need from the community? What are you looking for? Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the interns have been extremely helpful. Um, I'd like to train uh, more people to do the kind of help that, uh, uh, like basically the kind of work work that Dino and I are doing, um, running things like the 250 KX three. Uh, we tried teaching a few interns that, uh, uh, during the initial airdrops and all the data got corrupted. So we had to oh. sort of, yeah, we had to, to kind of start again, but that is, that is stuff that I would, I would much prefer to be working on, on use cases and utility and design and organization as opposed to that kind of stuff. But until, until we get, the right people in there to do that stuff. I have to do it because the, the, the data uh, being accurate is, is just too vital. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody, and this, this would be less on, on noobs, but anybody that can develop phone apps or uh, websites or uh, um, EOS applications, um, we've got a very small, but you know, a budget that exists for building things like uh, uh, um, the staking mechanism, which we actually already have a team on. Uh, but the, the dApps that we want to start building down the future, uh, and, and I think Stella is, is putting a team together to, to help with, with that kind of thing. Um, you know, I guess the, the, the thing that I would like to leave with everybody, and obviously the, the, the you know, the helping with, with shilling people has been intense. Like, like, like Ryan and Patrick Smith and, and the rest of the shill masters um, at Basecamp that are doing literally thousands of transactions a week. Uh, but you guys doing it in the tribes and like, literally every single tribe there's people doing dozens if not hundreds of transactions a week that i I mean well let's put it this way dino and i together couldn't do that with like 50 hours a day right right like if we wanted to so so already we've hit this sort of uh uh organic scaling that we just never could have done alone so that 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 is absolutely huge um but i think what i want to leave the people listening to this call is with this sue asking the question what is the value of Shipple or any cryptocurrency. I want you thinking about that. Anytime that you can make a transaction that's good, and some people are like, send Shipple to five random people. Eh, okay, <laughs> it's not really. It, it makes us look cool to the rest of the ecosystem because they're like, what the hell is going on with this joke token? Like nothing, nothing to see here, Go oh, just move on. Um, but meaningful transactions are something that I want people to be brainstorming on how to do, right? Um, having transactions where somebody says, Hey, I got some rocks. You want to buy them? And instantaneously, I'm like, yes. And honestly, it was just, like the coolest thing that I've ever bought with Shipple. I'm not even kidding right now. This rock. 
Happiness is shipple. Fuck banks. Made by this lady right here. Hold on. Boom. Um, so think about ways that, that, that you can do that. That at any time you can increase the emotional quotient or the attachment to tribe, you know, that, that meaning, it, I don't know, it, it almost sounds cheesy a little bit coming out of my face, but it's really not. Anything that increases the belief even between two people in this digital magic internet thing that's just a number in your phone, anything that increases the belief in that is pure gold. It really, really is. Because if, if, if you do it one time, then the person that you, you know, exchange that value with is going to have that in their head that it's possible, right? And when there's 5,000 people that are suddenly thinking that some weird new thing is possible, crazy shit starts to happen. And it already is. You guys have seen it, right? Like there's it, it, so something weird is going on, right? It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so that is what I would just plead people to meditate on and to consider and to experiment with. Like there's no, you know, right or wrong way to do this. We're going to find ways that work. We're going to find ways that don't work. And the faster we find the ways that don't work, the faster we're going to find the ways that do. Can I add two things to that, to um, that, that, you know, in ways that people can help? Uh, one is um, kind of along the same lines as what Corey had said, um, to develop belief in this and to develop the, the, the value in it. And one of the main ways that I would like to see that is, um, A, start tipping people on memes that you really like. Um, you know, when you see a meme that uh, makes you smile, um, I want you to think about the fact that your smile has value and you should tip that creator of that meme. It's not why we're doing it. We're not, you know, we're not creating these memes um, to, you know, make some shit. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's you know, a few people that are, but <laughs> Sue and Rob, um, you know, but, <laughs> the, uh, but tip Uber. Uh, would that make a meme that makes you smile? Your smile has value. And the other thing is that um, get people to join base camp that you really feel get it, you know, or um, might, right. Or might get it. Um, you know, I think a lot of us that are in base camp, can't articulate the overall experience of what we're doing. And that's okay. Sometimes you just let them experience it for themselves and get them there. But um, what we're doing, I, and this is just my personal uh, belief, is that what we're doing is really special. And we all have people in our lives that we really feel that um, either deserve to experience what we're experiencing, um, or that you think that would really get it, you know, that would, that would be a, a great addition to what we're doing. Um, obviously, we want to grow, and that is a huge thing for us. That is, you know, um, by far one of our, 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 our most intense goals right now is to, to grow. And we have this mission where you can earn, you know, a measly 25K uh, for sending, um, a message, one message per day to somebody that um, that you care about, that you really think would um, would be a good addition to base camp, and um, it's pretty much the same five people that do that mission every day. But I read every single one of those messages, and I'll tell you, you know, not enough of us are making heartfelt messages to people that we care about to get them to um, to think about this. Now, a lot of us have people in our lives that we think would dig it and you tell them and they're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, that sounds like a cult and no, thank you. Um, but in my, I just want to say in my generation, I get that a lot from, yes. <laughs> from the older people. <laughs> Although I did get a phone call today that said, your enthusiasm for this has me very curious as to what's going on. So, well, and that's exactly it. And you know, one of the things that is cool is that you say, "Hey, just go and check it out for yourself and see what's going on." Because um, I, I guarantee you the first three memes that they read, and the first, you know, the very first two of them uh, don't make any sense. <laughs> don't make any sense at all. Um, they're going to be even more intrigued. Um, that's that's yeah. I really do I want mean, to start a mission right where now Base Camp has a lot of like. Oh my god! 
I don't, I don't, I kind of don't know what to think about some of these memes, um, especially some of the ones coming out of Nigeria. I love. <laughs> yep. Love <you> guys. <laughs> well, dude, the one with the one with the bike is still right. The one with the bike is still on my mind, where it's all the kids yeah. and the two tires. So it's like, yeah, that that that's some that right. That's some stripple up to me. Enough. Yep, that was from Shipple.edu. Yeah. I think it was a Nigerian that made it, though, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, and you know, awesome. Stella put it, you know, and she says this quite often, um, but um, it is a it is a um, a shared hallucination, right? Yeah. Um, as far as what's going on here, um, that's a little weird to me. Um, I mean, but I I kind of get it. I mean, what aren't we doing? I mean, it, is anything that we're doing not weird? No. Um, I mean, we're making. <laughs> We're making significant change in the world, um, you know. But um, I think that getting getting base camp to grow is um, one of the, the the most direct and most of the important uh, ways that you can help us out right now. Yep, I agree. New blood, and this yep. is the thing from a pragmatic point of view. Um, the people that are coming in right now think that two hundred fifty thousand shill is a normal amount to have. Everybody that was, has been here since the beginning is like, I'm a shillionaire. What? Here's the thing. You, you may be the only ones, right, that, that you know, get that for free. And yeah. after 2000, it's going to be people thinking, oh, man, I got 100,000. That's awesome. And if I work really hard someday, I could be a shillionaire. Yeah. If you work real hard or steal Sue's memes, <clears throat> yeah. I um, mean, you know what I mean? Like that. So it, it, the new blood is, is hypercritical to allow us to start creating that sense at these at these new levels um to where you know xyz amount of shill is the norm you know um and uh what's really messed up is that's actually true for every every tradable asset that has ever existed yes. right like i initially bought tesla when it came on the market for 14 and then it actually dipped down to seven that day um which is fun right everyone thinks of tesla now as like somewhere between 200 and 300 appropriately right um and if you get it for 200 everyone thinks that's a deal i got it for seven right so it it it, it works in reverse for us right now because right now the time and effort that it takes is lower and will always increase um and the cost that it's going to take to to uh, to get chill is 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 always going to go up at least for, for me until we get on decks and then it's just not going to be in my control anymore yeah i mean uh, on base camp right now we have a mission for all new people on how to earn your first million and it is a several step process yep and, it's not it, that it, hard though no it's not but you're earning you're truly earning your first million now. yep i mean you all have right. to work for it you do. all right you do what else you got that i mean you guys kind of covered the last the last couple questions there for us um what will make shuffle the best crypto out there <laughs> um it is. so this this goes back to to the core <laughs> organizing principle um the way the best way to track how much bitcoin is going to cost has nothing to do with mining and everything to do with the number of people that are actively trading it and have it so the number of active wallets on bitcoin versus the number of transactions will give you a very good sort of idea as to where the price is going to go over the following two years. So that's something that I think about a lot, right? The number of transactions, especially meaningful ones, not just random stuff that doesn't mean anything to anybody, but real value transmissions, right? Between humans um, and the number of human beings that, that actively uh, hold it. Um, will, you know, if, if that ever gets higher than Bitcoin, um, Shipple will have a higher market cap than Bitcoin. Um, I firmly believe that. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a lot of things that could, could sort of mitigate that, but I, I, I believe that that's true. Um, so yeah, to, to make it the best, I mean, that, that means that enough people need to want it, right? So, you know, what are, what are the reasons you would get, um, Shipple instead of Electronium? Electronium you can get in a phone wallet, but it's not connected to anything else. So that kind of sucks. Um, and you can't really do anything with it cause you're not building any apps with it. So that's kind of boring, right? So what are we doing? We're connected to the entire EOS ecosystem. That's going to eventually get it uh, connected through DEXs to the rest of cryptocurrency period, which is insane. I can't tell you how much of a big deal that is. Um, and we're going to constantly be brainstorming and creating more ways to not only use it, 
but to connect it to real communities of real people that have decided to to engage in it, which is something that other than Dogecoin um, hasn't really happened on purpose before. There's there's other things that that you know where it sort of organically gets created. But that's 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 our focus, right? Do I think that we're ever going to be bigger than Bitcoin? Fuck no, that's crazy. <laughs> Look, um, but statistically, or or you know it, that we, it wouldn't break any of the laws of physics for that to be true, right? It would just enough crazy things would have to happen over a ridiculously short amount of time to make this a movement that that got just out of control. Um, and and I don't know about you guys, but I don't know how, what that looks like. <laughs> Right. But again, it's not impossible. It's just really, 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 really unlikely. But if it happened, it would be, it would have everything to do with the number of people that wanted it. Um, and the number of people that would not let it go, uh, except to have a real transmission of value. So it, it really comes down to that, that network of people that are holding it versus people that are, are transacting. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So do you have any other questions before we kind of wrap her up? No, I've just been throwing them in there as they came up. All right. <laughs> well, if you guys don't have anything else specifically to say, I just want to say thank you for doing this for us tonight and covering all these questions. Um, I a learned a lot. I Good. learned a lot. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, I'd, I'd I'd love to see I'd love to see what happens when when uh, when we do this again. Obviously, you know, people will ask the same questions, and you know, we can maybe chop this up and give people you know, little little bits of data here and there or whatever. But yeah, thank you guys for for doing this, man. Like th this is the kind of information we definitely need to to download into the brains of every noob. Right. All right. Awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks.